A woman stands in front of a locked door. With a little surge of power, she breaks the lock. Meanwhile, the dormitory is engulfed in darkness as a result of the woman's magic. Ma Yin Jung Sr. and dorm mate orders him to check the source of the blackout. After putting up a fight, Yin Jung submits to the injunction of his senior. Grumbling along the way, he soon finds himself at the entrance of the rooftop. Yin Jung hesitantly opens the door and is greeted by a woman emitting magical blue light from her body in midair. Staggered by Yin Jung's presence, the woman is momentarily distracted when suddenly a strike of lightning hits her, causing her to fall. After recovering from the lightning strike himself, Ying Zhong rushes to the woman who is rendered unconscious. At first, he decides to simply ignore her, but the main character in him gets the best of him, causing him to save the damsel by performing CPR. Yin Zhong smacks his lips with the woman's, and apparently his version of CPR is basically just French kissing. As the woman regains her consciousness, she slaps Yin Zhong, who tries to reason with her, which earns him another slap. The next morning, Yin Zhong is sitting outside when he sees a rich man calling after a woman. Muzi, in hopes to take her out. He notices that she's the same violent woman from his encounter. As she's mocking the man's choice, he notices a billboard is about to fall on top of a girl. He quickly lunges towards the girl in a desperate attempt. He extends his arm, causing him to emit a magical blue dragon that stops the billboard from crushing the girl. Yin Xiong's sudden outburst of power causes him to faint on sight. When he wakes up, he finds himself tied to a bed with Muzi on top of him. As she's seductively removing her clothes, Yin Xiong pleads her to stop. Muzi buttons up her shirt and reveals that she's a cultivator. She presents two choices in front of Yin Xiong, to either die or join her and become immortal. Muzi brings Yin Xiong to the top of a hotel and asks him to jump from the rooftop as she believes that will help Yin Xiong awaken his powers. Terrified by the unorthodox training style, Yin Xiong asks her what will happen if he fails, to which she simply says that there will just be another death. With that, she pushes Yin Xiong. As he's falling, he makes a desperate attempt to summon the power he used to save the girl, but fails miserably. Just when he gives up hope, Muzi embraces him, telling him that they'll die together. Looks like someone forgot to take their antipsychotic drugs. After they're about to collide with the ground, Yin Xiong manages to summon magical wings. He takes Muzi in his arms and takes flight. Up in the air, as Yin Xiong is admiring the view, Muzi opens her own set of wings and forcefully pushes Yin Xiong to the ground. In an ominous tone, she tells him that if he flaunts or reveals his powers, other cultivators will kill him. A mysterious old man dressed in robes orders a woman, Ru Yue, to find the owner of power fluctuation. He menacingly adds that if he's weak, kill him. Later, Yin Xiong is greeted by an angry Iridian who had been waiting for Muzi. After Muzi tells him that she's lethargic after her trip to the hotel with Yin Zhong, giving Ridian the idea they've been up all night doing naughty things, he tries to hit Yin Zhong, but Muzi quickly jumps in and pushes Ridian off, saying that only she gets to hit her man. Arriving at the location where Yin Zhong first displayed his powers, Ru Yue devises a plan to capture him. Through her mobile, she leaks raunchy pictures of hers with the message that she's looking for the cultivator and wants to date him. The woman has quite literally set a booty trap to entrap a man. Unluckily, Ru Yue is bamboozled by simps and horny perverts. Meanwhile, in his dorm room, Yin Zhong is trying out his new smartphone given by Muzi. His senior, who's been seeing him use the computer, starts to babble about meeting with a cute boy. In a hypnotic state, he leaves his room to meet the cute boy in the park. Yin Zhong follows after him. As they reach the park, Ru Yue is already waiting for them. After getting grossed out by Yin Zhong Sr., who tries to grab her, Ru Yue breaks the seduction spell and kicks him into the air. Yin Zhong rescues his senior by summoning his wings, giving up his identity as a cultivator. As Yin Zhong is running away from his senior, who thinks he's onto him, he's hit by Ru Yue's magical attack. She casts a love spell on Yin Zhong, making him follow her to the rooftop. A spellbound Yin Zhong proposes to Ru Yue. Revolted by his actions, Ru Yue removes the spell and starts attacking Yin Zhong. As she's about to finish him off, Muzi comes to the scene. Through telepathy, Muzi asks Yin Zhong to remember his first lesson taught by her about the stages of cultivation, which are further divided into early, middle, late, and peak stages. Unless he wields a weapon, he'll quickly be killed by cultivators on a higher level. After noticing that Muzi is using telepathy, Ru Yue charges at her with full speed. Despite knowing that she has no chance of winning against Ru Yue, who is in her late stage of foundation establishment, Muzi barely faces her to buy Yin Zhong enough time to escape. As Yin Zhong makes his escape as per Muzi's command, he realizes that Muzi can't possibly overpower Ru Yue, who is ten times stronger than her. Meanwhile, Muzi's getting her ass kicked by Ru Yue, who urges her to discard Yin Zhong as 
he ran out to her. But the girl remains adamant on her stance regarding Yin Jiong. As Ryue is about to strike down Muzi with the intention of killing her, Muzi closes her eyes, and when she opens them, she sees Ryue's fire whip has pierced Yin Jiong, creating a gaping hole in his body. In his last moments, he sees Muzi huddled around him, begging him not to die. When Yin Jiong regains consciousness, he finds himself in another dimension. As he's looking around, he's greeted by Li Zhongji, who tells him that he's here by mistake. After noticing that Yin Jiong is emitting the same spiritual energy as his, Zhongji comes to the conclusion that he's the cultivating partner of one of his offsprings. Yin Jiong introduces himself as Muzi's husband. Since he's Muzi's ancestor, Zhongji gives him Huan Tian bands, which will help him during the battle. With that, he sends Yin Jiong back to his world. Yin Jiong rises from the ashes to save Muzi. Petrified by Yin Jiong's increased spiritual energy, Ryue brings her fire whip out to play, but with one touch, Yin Jiong shatters her weapon. Pushed into a corner, Ryue decides to die on her terms. As she jumps from the rooftop, Yin Jiong embraces her in his arms and sheepishly tells her that if she's lost the fight, she can simply run away. Tears run down her face as Ryue pushes Yin Jiong away from her and berates him by saying that he's just a rookie who has no idea about the cruel world of cultivating. Before Yin Jiong can ask further questions, Muzi stops him and drags him away to the hotel. When they're alone, Muzi overpowers Yin Jiong and ties him to the bed. After tying him to the bed, she gets on top of Yin Jiong and explains that this is a co-cultivation method from the Li clan. She then places her lips on Yin Jiong's lips. As they enter each other's subconscious, Yin Jiong relives the traumatic past of Muzi. He sees Muzi's clan engulfed in a fire. The assailant asks a helpless woman about Li clan's family treasure, Black Sky. Meanwhile, Muzi ventures into Yin Jiong's subconscious to find more about his spiritual energy. Upon reaching the source of his power, she's bewildered to find out that his magic seems to be alive. After waking up from their ritual, Muzi tells him that the assailant had wiped out her entire clan because of Black Sky, which she now possesses. When Yin Jiong enters his dorm, he finds Ru Yue waiting for him, dressed as a seductress. Upon seeing Yin Jiong, she sweetly refers to him as darling and tells him that she has no place to go. Yin Jiong offers Ru Yue his bed which gives his gay roomie the chance to persuade Yin Jiong into sleeping with him. Yin Jiong scutters to sleep on the floor instead. The next day, a battle to win Yin Jiong's affection commences between Ru Yue and Muzi. When Ru Yue is encircled by an army of simps, she declares Yin Jiong her man. Ridian joins the scene and asks Muzi out on a date upon seeing her. After harshly rejecting Ridian, Muzi grabs onto Yin Jiong's arm, which also makes Ru Yue latch herself onto Yin Jiong's vacant side. Observing the scene, Ridian is green with envy as he once again loses Muzi to Yin Jiong. The trio then take a trip to the cinema. Both girls try to charm Yin Jiong in their own ways. As the two are about to lock lips with Yin Jiong, he slips away, which results in a kiss between Ru Yue and Muzi. Honestly, the whole fiasco can easily be tackled if they all agree to a threesome. Next morning, Ridian deploys an army of gangsters to break Yin Jiong's bones and especially his baby-making bone. As the gangsters attack him, the girls quickly jump in to save their man. After kicking and punching the gangsters, Yin Jiong hands a gift to Muzi. Upon seeing Yin Jiong and Muzi interact with each other, Ru Yue gets dejected and leaves. After noticing how lonely Ru Yue is, Yin Jiong reminisces about his past and how he has always been alone. Like every shonen hero, Yin Jiong extends his hand to befriend his enemy. Ru Yue answers Yin Jiong's kindness with hostility and coldly tells him that if he had not gotten stronger, she would have killed him. She also tells him that her reason to get closer to him was because she thought he could protect her. Yin Jiong extends his hand once again and says that he'll protect her. Blushing at his politeness, Ru Yue asks him if it was Muzi's idea to provoke her. To clear off Muzi's name, Yin Jiong tells Ru Yue that, like her, Muzi feels alone too. After witnessing compassion from the person she was ordered to kill, Ru Yue gets emotional, which makes her flee the scene. Meanwhile, Ru Yue's evil master preys on two students after after catching them together in an empty classroom. Later, Ru Yue heads out to her master's lair to inform him about her unsuccessful attempt on Yin Jiong's life. The old man informs Ru Yue that after absorbing blood from his recent kills, he'll reach a higher level of cultivation, and in 10 days' time, he'll be strong enough to kill Muzi and Yin Jiong. He orders Ru Yue to keep a watch on Yin Jiong until then. After returning from her master's lair, Ru Yue meets up with Yin Jiong and Muzi. She spills the beans about her master's evil plan. Yin Jiong reassures her that he will protect her. As a child, Ru Yue was an outcast. Her only friend was a snake spirit residing in the caves. One fateful day, a fortune teller visits her village. After crossing paths with him, he telepathically warns Ru Yue to stay away from the snake spirit, but she pays no heed to his words. Upon reaching the caves, she finds the place empty. Rushing to her village, she comes across her dead parents and houses overtaken by flames. Ru Yue stumbles upon the same fortune teller who was heavily injured. In his final moments, he beseeches her 
to find the snake spirit. With retribution in mind, little Ruyue reaches the cave where she meets her future master who gives her a weapon, Leaf Fire, to kill the snake spirit. Following the blood trail, Ruyue ventures into the forest where she finds her old friend battered down. As the snake spirit inches closer to Ruyue, she raises her weapon, inserting it into the snake's abdomen. With quivering hands, the snake spirit puts ointment on Ruyue's wounds and calls her a friend. After crying over her friend's death, Ruyue seeks out the old man to save her from the pain. From then on, Ruyue became his apprentice. After finishing up her backstory, Ruyue informs Yin Jong that her master has adopted a new technique to level up, which involves the consumption of blood. If he manages to kill two cultivators, then he'll level up to the last stage of cultivation. With a common foe posing a threat to their lives, Ruyue, Yin Jong, and Muzi join hands together. Ruyue passes on the urgency of obliterating her master before he finishes the ritual of blood fiend art, or else he become invincible to the point where he can forcefully take Muzi and Yin Jong's spiritual energy, enabling him to transgress to the last stage of cultivation. Ru Yue lends her insight on her master by disclosing a fatal flaw in the blood fiend art technique. Later in a hotel room, Muzi comes out wearing a towel, which fills Yin Jong with dirty thoughts. Excitedly, he asks Muzi if they're going to co-cultivate together. Muzi answers him by hitting him hard in the head. After crushing his dreams of getting some, Muzi shows Yin Jong a way to channel his inner power. Through a blood contract, Yin Jong can utilize his power by making a spirit weapon. With that, she draws blood from Yin Jong hand by slashing him. Muzi orders the weapon spirit to come out. Suddenly, a beautiful woman greets Yin Jong by calling him master. The weapon spirit informs Yin Jong that if he wishes to unleash her full power, they'll need to level up. With that, she disappears. The next day, Ridian hires two cultivators to kill Yin Jong. As the cultivators charge at Yin Jong, Muzi and Ru Yue appear to his rescue, but unfortunately, they're overpowered. As the cultivators force them to give up their weapons, Yin Jong summons the weapon spirit, who saves the day. As the weapon spirit kicks the bad guy's butts, Ru Yue studies the weapon spirit containing conscience. Recalling her battle with Yin Jong, she points out that he wielded a powerful weapon back then as well. Subconsciously remembering his encounter with Zhang Ji, who helped him during his fight with Ru Yue, Zhang Ji had warned him not to disclose anything about the meeting between them, or else he'll suffer his wrath. Bearing his words in mind, Yin Jong exclaims that this must be a favor from God. When Ru Yue asks for a name, the weapon spirit reveals that she hasn't got one. The girl suggests names to her, earning unpleasant remarks from the weapon spirit. Taking account of her identity as a weapon spirit, Yin Jiang suggests the name Ling Er. As Yin Jiang's her master, the weapon spirit wholeheartedly accepts the name. After settling upon a name, the girls retire to prepare for the battle. Before going, Muzi advises Yin Jiang to work on his cultivation level. Left alone with Ling Er, Yin Jiang exclaims that he doesn't want women to save him. Guess someone's not a feminist. Ling Er spawns a portal, beckoning Yin Jing to follow her. Upon entering a new world, Ling Er decides that she can give her spiritual energy to Yin Jiang, but receiving such powerful spirit energy would be painful. After receiving a green signal from Yin Jiang, Ling Er begins the process of transferring her spiritual energy into Yin Jiang. Remembering the painful past of both Ru Yue and Muzi, Yin Jiang violently bears the pain. As the process of transferring spiritual energy comes to an end, Yin Jiang and Ling Er are attacked by a tree spirit. Yin Jiang gets a call from Muzi, calling him urgently. Returning to their world, Yin Jiang and Ling Er meet up with Muzi, who takes them all to an adult shop. Before Yin Jiang can get any ideas, Muzi explains that it's a shop for cultivators. Upon entering the shop, the trio is greeted with sensual music. A male salesman greets them joyfully. All of a sudden, Muzi uses her magic to burn the computer. Muzi demands to see the supervisor. She throws a VIP card on the table, shocking the salespeople. Since only the person with the VIP card is allowed to meet the supervisor, Muzi hands Yin Jiang spirit stones, used as money in the cultivation world to enjoy his time. The sales girl, in a bunny costume, pounces on the chance to rip off Yin Jiang. Sweetly greeting Yin Jiang and Ling Er, she shows them the world of gambling. Meanwhile, Muzi meets with the supervisor, demanding to buy their most prized possession. On the other hand, the sales girl believes that she's made a profit after fooling Yin Jiang into getting a rusted dagger. After Muzi gets what she came for, the trio exit the shop. Later, the sales girl excitedly reveals to her boss about her encounter. Upon hearing her, the old man faints after saying that that dagger was actually priceless. In the old man's lair, Ru Yue approaches her master, informing him that she's failed at her mission. The old man asks her whether it was because of her inferior spiritual energy or if she had been colluding with Yin Jiang and Muzi. Surprised by her master's words, she tries to evade his accusations. The old man reveals that he's been spying on her by taking up the pretense of a janitor. With that, he attacks Ru Yue. After Dodging the attack, Ru Yue drops her act and runs from her former master. Meanwhile, Muzi inspects the dagger Yin Jiang got. As it was Ling Er who picked up the dagger, 
before him, she informs the two that this dagger contains the spirit of a real dragon after Zhang Ji killed it. Listening to Ling Er, Yin Jiong excitedly exclaims that he can release the dragon on the old man during the battle. Ling Er stops his daydreaming by telling him that if he lets the spirit of the dragon out, it'll do more harm than good. But if Yin Jiong utilizes his spirit energy, then he can wield the dagger to land fatal blows. To test the theory, Yin Jiong puts his spiritual energy into the dagger, which helps him create two clones of himself. Just then, Ru Yue telepathically calls him for the fight. As he's rushing, Muzi puts a pendant around his neck, which he had acquired from the shop. Arriving at the scene despite attacking the old man together, they're still overpowered by him. Putting the dagger to use and splitting into clones, Yin Jiong manages to injure the old man, Yong Jing, and mockingly says that the blade's designed to kill dogs. At least Yin Jiong's good at trash talking. Suddenly, he grabs Yin Jiong by the throat, lifting him into the air. The Yin Jiong dangling in the air disappears, and another Yin Jiong appears from behind, slashing the old man. After releasing the decoy, the old man unleashes the power of his fiend art, which drains spiritual energy and blood. Caught under the old man's attack, Ru Yue, Yin Jiong, and Muzi find their life ebbing away. As a last resort, Yin Jiong summons Ling Er, whose spiritual energy is unmatched. After creating a shield for Yin Jiong and the girls, Ling Er tries to stop the old man's attacks. As Ling Er can only hold him off for a short while, she urges the trio to run away. Yin Jiong and the girls escape into the forest. After Ling Er returns inside Yin Jiong, it's not long before the old man catches up to them. Having the old man exactly where they want him to be, Ru Yue unleashes Young Flame Array, which traps the old man. As they launch a combined attack, thinking they finally have him, the old man makes it out unharmed and reveals that he knows Ru Yue studied his book of fiend art, which he left on purpose to deceive Ru Yue into believing that she knows his weakness, but in reality, Young Flame Array intensifies his powers. After being held back by Ling Er, who was previously summoned by Ying Zhong in order for the girls to escape, the old man addresses Ru Yue by disclosing that all these years, it was him who had massacred her village. As he came searching for the snake spirit's core, he saw a young girl with the rare ability of self-cultivating, so he decided that he'll take her to attain the late stage of cultivation. After his failed attempt of luring Ru Yue by adopting the pretense of an old fortune teller, he then turned himself into the snake spirit and slaughtered her entire village. Later, when Ru Yue was aggravated, he came to help her kill the snake spirit, ultimately resulting in Ru Yue submitting herself in his care. Mad with anger, Ru Yue charges at the old man, doing exactly what he wants. Just as he's about to suck Ru Yue's spiritual energy, he's pierced by the dagger. Ying Zhong reveals that he knew Ru Yue was impulsive, so he hid the dagger behind her and launched it just when the old man thought he had everything under his thumb. After recovering from the attack, the old man manipulates a massive airplane with the help of Fiendar to hit Ying Zhong with it. Muzi quickly steps in and unleashes her entire force to stop the plane. As both parties are clashing with intense power, Ying Zhong entwines his hand with Muzi. His pendant radiates with energy and together, they attack the old man. The solidified attack does notable damage to the old man, but it's still not fatal enough for him to be obliterated. With full force, the old man unleashes his final attack, completely overpowering Muzi. Now as Muzi lies on the ground, unmoving, Ying Zhong charges toward the dagger, but before he can reach it, the old man wields it and cuts Ying Zhong's body. Remembering that the dagger corrodes the blood, he unleashes his spiritual energy, allowing it to be sucked by the old man's fiend art. As the old man chuckles, he notices that his powers are starting to diminish. Ying Zhong charges at the old man with the dagger in his hand and delivers a fatal blow. Before dying, he curses Ying Zhong that his senior will avenge him. Ru Yue cries happy tears now that the perpetrator who killed her dear friend friend has been eliminated. Meanwhile, Ying Zhong takes Muzi's lifeless body in his arms and addresses an unforeseen force. An eye appears in the air and questions Ying Zhong about how long he had known about its presence. Ying Zhong replies that he felt another presence after Muzi traveled into his subconscious. He then begs the force to save Muzi, and in return, he'll sacrifice the Huantian beads. The force asks him to bring the beads in the span of three years. Next day, Muzi brings a blindfolded Ying Zhong to the meadow, where she has picnics with her mother. Muzi calls calls him her husband. Together in each other's embrace, Ying Zhong promises that he'll always protect her. And that's the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you saw, subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading a lot of videos just like this, so I'll see you at the next one.